Hello and welcome to the Car Kernel channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about car tires and truck tires. We have a lot to cover in this video. We're going to go from the very basics to how you choose the best tire for your car to some service tips, some advice and everything in between. We got a lot to cover in this video. So let's dig right into it. Let's start with tire basics, the size. Most tires will, let's take an example, P215, 55, R17. So the P means passenger tire. There's another classification, which is LT, light truck. These are the classifications you're gonna find in tires, generally. Now, let's start with the first one. The first number, let's say 215. That is the width of the tire, this way, in millimeters. So 215 is 215 millimeters. The second number, 55, let's say, for example, that is the height of the tire. That is not an actual measurement. That is a percentage of the width of the tire. So if we have 215, so 215 millimeters, by 55, that is 55%, of 215. That's how that works. And then the last number, the R17, R18, R15, R whatever the case may be. The R is radial applied tires. That's how the construction of the tire is. Honestly, in today's world, that's the most tire you're going to find. We don't really have other kinds of tires. They're mostly going to be R tires, radial tires. The 17 or the size, that is the size of the wheel. So, and that is in inches. This is an interesting thing that you have millimeters for the width, inches for the size of the tire. That is the very basic thing that most people will know. That's why I glanced over it very quickly. And the next important number that you're gonna find next to that is, let's say for the example of this tire, it says 99H. That is right next to the size, which this tire, by the way, is 255-45R18. Just for reference, this is going to be 99H. The 99 is the load index. How much weight can this tire take? And then the H is a speed rating. What's the maximum safe speed that this tire can handle? We're going to cover a little bit about this as we progress in the video, but I just wanted to, you to understand the numbers. Some tires will have XL on them. That is extra low. That is mainly for SUVs, larger cars or cars that are very heavy. One last number that we're going to discuss here. There is a wear number. How fast does this tire wear? And it's a very confusing number and people often mistake this one for other stuff. Let's say the wear number is three or 400. Well, it's a different odd calculation. So 100 being the average, how many times more does this tire last than the average? It really doesn't make sense, but basically the higher the number, potentially the higher the life of this tire wear-wise will be. Let's talk about the tire age or how you know how old this tire is, because that's very important and we'll cover into that a little bit more down the road in the video. There is, at least in the United States, and should be in most parts of the world, but it's called differently, this is a DOT number on the tire. This number indicates when this tire was made, and it's usually four numbers. The first two numbers are which week of the year the tire is made. For example, of this tire, it says 1514. So it's made in the 15th week of 2014. Now, one note about these tires is, so when you go buy tires, you want to look at this, but just understand that some of these tires will sit in, in storage or in stock in the shelf until you buy them. So when you're buying tires, they need to be up to one year old. You will never be able to buy tires that are 100% fresh that were make, made three days ago. Sometimes you can, but that shouldn't be a factor. But do not buy tires that are older than one year old because you're already buying older tires. Sometimes you're shopping around, you'll find really cheap tires that are a good brand and, and basically the same, but it says close out or this tire is being discontinued. Watch for those or just 
random sellers that are not tire sellers because some of these tires, so when, when a big retailer will have all these tires sitting around, nobody bought them. For example, they became two or three year old and nobody bought them. They just get rid of them because they don't want the problems because these are older tires now. These little retailers will buy them and sell them to you at a very cheap price and you're gonna run to buy them, but guess what? You're buying old tires. Always check the production date on the tires. So let's talk about how do you choose the best tires for your car come time to replace tires. I see people, this is where everything goes haywire a little bit. People go into these frenzies. I want to check all these tires, read all about them and all this. But here's the best way to determine what's your next tire for your car. Look at the old tire. If your old tire lasted long and you liked it, the car drove smooth, you didn't have really concerns toward the later end of that life of the tire, why are you changing the brand and changing the style? You, people say, well, I could get a better tire. Yes, but you could also get worse. You won't find out till on the, they're on the car. Folks, tires make the biggest impact on how a car drives. You just do not, you will not realize it until you change the brand of tires. It completely changes the way the car drives. So when you are choosing tires, your first question to yourself is, did I like the old tires? If it's a no, then what are the original tires for this car? Now, let's clarify one thing. The car manufacturers, they do not make tires. They buy them from somebody else. That's just how it is. However, when they were testing this car, when they were manufacturing this car, when they were engineering this car, they chose specific tires. They tested a bunch of tires and they arrived at the tires that in the engineer's eyes performed best for this car. Doesn't mean they're good tires, that they last long and they're the best, but they just met the criteria of how the engineers wanted this car to drive. So it's a good idea to actually look at the OEM tires. And we're going to get in a bit how you find out which were the OEM tires in case you don't have them anymore in your car. But the OEM tires are a good basis. So if you're not sure and you're going from a random brand or a brand that you were not happy with, give the OEM tires a try or at least read reviews on them. Speaking of reviews, and this is another mistake that people do, you go read reviews online. A good place to read reviews, in my opinion, is TireRack.com. They also have good prices for tires, so that's one place I would shop for tires, comparing prices on your journey to compare prices. Cover that in a little second. Read reviews specific to your car. Remember, many cars from different manufacturers will have the same size tires. So when you go read reviews and they have very high reviews, uh, if you drive a Toyota and all the reviews are for a Honda, well, guess what? you're not really getting the correct review. You need, in Tire Rack, there's a tool which specifies, I want to read reviews for people that have the exact same car that I'm driving. That's why you're actually reading relevant reviews to your car, not just everybody else, because this specific tire will behave really good on this model car, but on another model, it will be horrible. That does happen because car suspension and everything else, the weight of the car, will play a big factor in how this tire will behave on this car. And as a general rule of thumb, folks, and I will break this to you, there is no perfect tire for your car. That should be out of the window. You're gonna have to make the perfect compromise. You're gonna have to find a tire that best suits your needs. I drive different than you. You drive different than the next awesome viewer that is watching this video. Everybody will have a preference on their tires. But as a general guideline, Here's, here's what I think about it. The harder the tire is, the material of the tire, the better it will handle. But it'll also be noisier, harsher, and will wear faster. That's just the way it is with tires. The softer the tire is, the smoother it is, the longer it will last. But the handling, it will be very mellow and kind of all over the place. And it potentially could have different traction behavior in rain and snow and all of that. Speaking of snow, 
Summer tires, winter tires, all season tires. Let's talk about that briefly. Most people assume that winter tires are good in the snow because they have these weird, very aggressive tread on them. Well, actually, that is part of it, but not a big part. The biggest problem with tires in really cold weather below freezing is that the rubber almost freezes in a way. It gets very, very, very hard. Very hard tires tend to shrivel up and not really be able to handle rain and snow very well. They just start sliding over it. And that's why summer tires, they really don't do well in, in winter situations where you have snow, ice, and all this stuff because they really shrink up and now they're rock hard like, like a rock. You're basically sliding a rock over snow. It's a lot easier than sliding, let's say, a rubbery substance. The rubber tends to grab stronger when it's soft, but when it's hard, it just slides over like a rock. Winter tires, they're specifically designed to remain soft in sub-freezing temperatures. That is the main thing with winter tires. Now, winter tires, they're gonna be super loud because of the pattern that they have, and they will not handle well. If you've ever driven a car with, summer, with winter tires, in the summer, they drive terrible. They're noisy, they're unpredictable, the whole car shakes, and it doesn't handle well because they're not designed for that. Equally, if you drive summer tires in the this, in this snow, it's, uh, for lack of a better term, it's a death trap. That's how it is. All season tires are the perfect compromise between the two. This is a tire that doesn't get super, super soft, where in the summer it's undrivable, and it's not super hard or have that very little resistance to sub-freezing temperatures where it's undrivable in the snow. It's kind of the perfect compromise between the two. So depending on your driving situations, you wanna choose winter tires or all season tires, or if you don't have snow at all, summer tires might give you some advantage. But actually most people, even when they don't have summer, you know, they don't have snow and they don't have all this, they don't choose summer tires, they choose all season because summer tires are a little bit on the too hard side because they're meant for performance and they are noisy, they don't last long, and that's just the way they are. Let's talk about tire problems, and this is an important section if you've watched this video this long. So the first problem with tires is age. Typically tires, when they reach around five years old, they're recommended for replacement. When you reach seven years old with the tires, they must be replaced. Because as the rubber ages, it tends to dry up naturally, that's how rubber behaves and it tends to develop something called dry rot where you have small cracks across the tire and the more it ages the bigger these cracks become and i cannot emphasize how unsafe that is because you're driving on the highway basically the structural integrity of that tire is compromised by these cracks the rubber no longer is pliable you hit a pothole that increases the chances of it just basically blowing up for lack of a better term don't let tires go over seven years old. At five years old, you're gonna wanna start actively shopping and deciding to get tires. See, something on dry rot that I wanna share with you. Certain tire shines and excessive use of these tire shines will actually prematurely dry rot the face of the tire. Do not use tire shine excessively, and not just for the tires. Did you know the tire shine goes on the brakes and some, some tire shines that are cheaper, they actually start harming your brakes and cause all kinds of issues. Do not use ex tire shine excessively, and they actually tend to go over the paint, cause all kinds of issues. The other issue with tires, which is a big one, and one we're gonna need to clarify here, tire balancing. Folks, there are two types of balance. There's just the Good old balance that balances the tire from doing this, this one. You basically have too much weight on one side that makes the tire do this. That was, we're talking about the tire and wheel assembly. You don't just balance the tire on its own. But that is the very basic 
basic balance and you're going to feel that driving at highway speeds usually right around a specific speed that harmonic vibration of the tire doing this is going to transfer into the suspension into the steering and you're going to feel it in the steering wheel as shaking but the other type of, of balance issue that is very common and commonly misdiagnosed is called the road force when you're balancing a tire in a balance machine when it does this there's no load on the tire the tire is just free spinning however road force is is the balance that checks how is this tire going to be stable this way is it going to bounce up and down that's what the road force is it's going to put a force a very strong force on the tire to see how smooth that tire is turning and how well it is meshed with the wheel now if the wheel has a high spot and the tire has an area where it's heavier than the rest of the tire every time that heavy area passes it's going to create like a, a drag or a jump that's how it is by centrifugal force that that heavy spot will kind of tend to pull the tire this way and it's going to create this motion as the tire is turning it's going to go up down up down and that's the problem with balance that most balance machines do not have this feature it's a very expensive machine that checks this tire places are getting very good at getting these machines because they're vital because so many people complain about it it is very important that you get your tire balanced for this and balanced for this otherwise as the tires you're going down the road the tire is basically jumping up and down it's going to create the vibration and that vibration is going to transfer into your steering wheel into the whole car and it's going to shake the whole car the shake from the the balance this this side balance will cause a lot more vibration than the simple balance that does this so you got to make sure that you're getting those tires road force balanced and at some point it cannot be done if the tire is way too far off you can have defective new tires that is common that is covered by warranty it's a little bit more difficult to get it covered and you need a good shop to stand behind you and kind of present your case to the manufacturer of the tire like hey this tire is not balanceable we tried the road force balance it's not balancing you need a new tire at that point and that does happen a lot one thing is with road force balance there's something called phase matching so the machine will look at the tire will look at the wheel and it'll say okay i have a heavy spot in the tire here and a heavy spot in the wheel right here if we counter them if we put the heavy spot across from each other they're actually going to balance themselves out that's called phase matching but sometimes that phase matching does not work and you actually either have to replace the wheel if it's severely bent and creating that hop up and down or you need to replace the tire so i thought i'd let you know that because this is very important the last condition we're going to cover is one that is talked about very little so many people do not understand this one it is vital that we cover it it's called tire kinesity the surface of the tire if it gets bent this way or this way it's not going to cause a vibration it's going to cause a pull most people when they hear my car is pulling they immediately go after the alignment and they spend all their money and it's the same thing tire kinesity causes most of the pulls when you drive a car that has a suspension caused pull you're usually not going to feel it at low speeds you're not going to be driving five miles an hour and the car just wants to jump one way that is typically not caused by you know camber pull it's gonna be caused by tire kinesity typically camber pulls and caster pulls you're not going to feel them until the car is driving a little bit of higher speeds maybe 20 miles an hour or more you get a car that at five miles an hour wants to throw itself one way or the other you likely have tire kinesity issue or something catastrophically wrong with the suspension if this is a normal car that's been in service likely it is tire kinesity now tire kinesity could be a manufacturing issue but it also could be a storage issue when you store tires for the case of you have summer winter tires or a tire store you need to look at how they store their tires stocking tires on top of each other causes tire kinesity when you go to a tire store in the olden days you they all used to stack them like that that is wrong that damages the tires because now the tire has pressure on it and it's going to start bending for god knows how long they've been stored like that tires should also always be stored next to each other sitting not stacked on top of each other so if you see a tire store that you're buying tires from that stores their tires like that walk away that's not a good way that's not a good idea for tires to be stored that way and the last problem with tires something called cupping 
And this is gonna cause an extreme noise <laughs> that the tire will make. It'll be similar to a wheel bearing noise and it is something that commonly misdiagnosed as a wheel bearing noise. You're basically gonna take your hand, pass it on the outer edge of the tire. Not one way, both ways. You should have an even surface. Just like when you go in the middle of the tire, it is smooth. Now this tire is heavily cupped and I can, I can feel it. There's a rough edge to it. On, on one side, this side seems more, this side is not as bad, the middle is always smooth. This is caused by a few things that you need to be aware of. One of them is lack of tire rotations because you're always hammering this tire at the same rate. So that's for example, if your engine is in the front, that's where your heavy weight is, that's always gonna wear this tire more. But the back doesn't have as much weight on it, so it's gonna tend to hop all the time, and that hopping, constant hammering is gonna actually wear the edge where it's, it's like jaggedy, it's up and down, it's cupped. So this will cause extreme noise to the tires, and that is something you need to be aware of. Worn struts, completely blown struts will also cause this because now the tire is just jumping around, up and down, up and down as you drive, and that's gonna do this to it. This is very common, I see this a lot, misdiagnosed, so very simple. You as an owner, just go to your car. You might wanna wear gloves, tires tend to get very dirty. Pass your hand over the edge. Do you feel, listen to that. Do you hear that noise? How it's like, like ribbed, but listen to this. There's no change in the sound. I want you to hear this. Listen to this one. When I come back, listen to it. That is cupped, and this is gonna make a lot of noise. One thing, one last thing about cupping, some poor quality tires will cause cupping by normal. They're just so poorly made that they will, they will have this issue, kinda, they're born with it and it's just gonna get worse and worse. Speaking of that, when you shop for tires, always go with known brands. Don't go with some unknown brand from whatever online website that doesn't sell tires normally just because they're cheaper. Cheaper is not always better. Equally, the most expensive tire is not always better. You need to do your homework. You need to do your research. Let's talk about tire services. And there are so many misconceptions about this. I need you to be aware to know the truth. Tire balancing, some tire places will tell you, oh, you gotta bring it every year for tire balance. That's maintenance, very important. There is no such thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you don't have a concern, why are you spending your money on a tire balance? I see people coming in the dealership where I work, oh, I need my tires balanced. Why? Well, just to make sure they're good. Do you have vibration? No. Do you have concerns? No. Then why are you balancing tires? Don't waste your money on tire balance unless you need it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's no point for it. Other thing is, when you have a pull, like you drive a car straight and, it, and you just briefly let go of the steering wheel for a second, it just wants to dart one way or another, you need to look at, did you just put tires on this car? And the simple verification of this is swap the front tires, left to right. If the pull changes or goes away, you have a tire pull and don't go wasting your money on an alignment because it ain't gonna fix nothing. Isolate the tire that is causing the pull, get it replaced or warranted, or whatever the case may be, but that is the cause of your pull. Tire rotations for Toyotas, I'm a Toyota technician, so I'll give you a recommendation for a Toyota, which actually happens to work for most manufacturers. Rotate your tires every 5,000 miles. There is a very good interval. Time doesn't really play a lot, but it is a good idea to replace it every 5,000, to rotate the tires every 5,000 miles. When you park your car for a long time in storage, inflate the tires to 55 PSI. Because tires, when you leave them on a parked car for a long time, they will develop a flat spot where that rubber is always being pushed in and not moved. It'll actually be a flat spot and that's gonna cause a lot of vibration. A road force balance will be able to pick this up. But if you overinflate that tire, only a very little point of that tire is gonna to touch the surface where it's not gonna create as big of a flat spot and could save your tires. 
But of course, when you go back to driving your car, you need to deflate it again. That's very important because you're going at that point over the recommended inflation of the tire. One last thing, tire repairs. When you have a nail on the tire, the only area that you can repair it is right here. You cannot repair a tire, a nail here. You cannot repair one here. This area, and of course the sidewalls, only in the middle. When you do a tire repair on the edge, you actually compromise the integrity of the tire. Same thing on this side, only in the middle. And there's something about tire repairs that you need to understand and know so you wouldn't go into this rabbit hole. If the nail goes straight in, we're good to repair it. If the nail goes sideways, where it enters here and exits at a, underneath the tire at a different spot, I don't recommend you fix those tires because the, the area that got compromised is so big, you cannot fix that and fix it safely. You're gonna need to replace the tire. If the nail is straight, it is in this area, you're good to repair it. Professional repairs, not the quick patches. The quick patches are not safe, folks. Remember, tires are very important to a car. They could really cause issues and safety issues if they're not repaired properly, they're not installed properly. Just thought I'd let you know this because I love you and I care about you. I want you to be safe in your car. A few bucks on a tire is gonna save your life versus you know, going the cheap route and the unsafe route. Before we wrap up the video, let's talk about where you should buy your tires. Folks, shop around. This will vary on your area because you could have different retailers, but I'll tell you my advice on this. All these tires are made by the same company. So regardless where you buy them, as long as they're not over a year old, they're good. Shop for the best price for the tire. They're all the same. The dealership is not a good place to buy tires. They do have a convenience where if you are in from Illinois, you're traveling in California and you have a flat tire and you have a warranty on these tires, you could drive in any Toyota dealership and get them replaced. But equally, you could do the same with Costco, which actually have very good prices on tires. Sam's Club, Tire Rack, Discount Tire. There are many places for tires. You just gotta find the better deal, do your homework. But the first thing is choose the tire you want, then shop for the price. Don't let the price of the tire be a large determining factor of when you buy the tire, because then you're gonna end up buying some off-brand tires that will actually ruin your ride, they will not last long, and then in the end, you spend a little money to get very little time of horrible performance, and it looks all a waste. Stick with known brand tires, and shop around, do your homework, and you're gonna buy the perfect tire for your car. And the most important thing about choosing your next tire is that you watch the size, of course, Try to remain within the same size that your car came with from the factory to retain the same driving characteristics that the car was designed for. But more importantly, and what I see people make a mistake with, is the load rating and the speed rating. Folks, this is very important, and let's spend a minute or so talking about this. You want to retain the same load rating. Try not to change it, because if you go for a tire that has a higher load rating, you're paying for more tire for unnecessary. You're just wasting your money. Same thing with the speed rating. Do not go with a speed rating that is lower than what your car's maximum speed is. Or better yet, don't go with a lower speed rating than what the OEM tire that came with your car. That is not safe. If, you, if your car, I understand we're all limited by the speed limits, but you gotta retain that speed rating for the car, just in case. And then the other thing is, which is very important, there is something called Z-rated tires. They're gonna be basically the high, one of the higher speed ratings of the tires. Do not get these for most, for example, of Toyotas, most Toyotas will not have ZR rated tires. And you're gonna see that right next to the R, or let's say R18 inch wheel, there's gonna be ZR18. There, these are high performance tires that can withstand very high speed. Do not get these unless you have a high performance car. I see so many people buy these and waste their money on these basically for average use on a normal car. They are atrocious. There's no other word for them. They wear very fast, they're super expensive. And for what? 
you're never going to go those high speeds. So what's the point of putting ZR tires on a Camry that is electronically limited to 170 miles per hour? I don't know. Don't do that. Don't stick with the same speed rating. If you want to go bigger tire, that's a different story. And we're not going to get into it in this video because those are modifications. But you got to stay with the same load rating and the same speed rating because that is very important because you could be overpaying for tires or potentially compromising the safety of the tire if you go lower. I hope this video is helpful or informative. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions about tires, leave them in the comment below. I'll be more than happy to help you. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.